watching now or later, welcome to Hillian's Hub with me, Hillian, along with... Ephesum Drakeel. And just as I look to the side, the game shows up in this and... Oh, oh okay, the audio was very low there. Oh, oh, I think I know what's going on. Uh, let me go into here, let me go into filters. Yeah, the move values is... I, there, there's still the move values uh, filters onto this, which, which lower the sound for about 15 seconds because yeah that's about how long the previous intro was so then how can i dissolve ah yeah that's how i can deactivate this okay so just switch that around to non okay that should have fixed that anyways welcome to showcase sunday where we try out four uh, games or we try out up to four games uh, for about half an hour each to see if there are any fun for getting uh, for streaming later or to just show them off and yeah the first game today is war of the overworld which is a spiritual successor to the dungeon keepers games yeah i'm surprised that uh, I'm, this isn't this game old by now and uh, not extremely old but old ish there there have you did speak of other spiritual successors that have come out since, or maybe yeah, along with. The dungeon yeah, the dungeons has been around games. for a while as well. The, I, I, the reason is, I know this game is somewhat old, and I know it's older than Discord. <laughs> okay. Which makes me wonder, is it still being updated? And it does say version 2.0.8 uh, up in the corner, and there is a big ass button to join the Discord over here. Well, at least it means the developers still care for these games and it... Wait, does this one have sequels? Not sure. I think there was one in the works at the very least. But we can check on that later. For now, let's uh, take a look here at my pet dungeon. <laughs> okay. Uh... Campaigns. Oh, three campaigns. That's nice. And then Scenario and Skirmish and Crucible, Endless Waves. Okay, we are going to check out the main yeah, the main mode though. So let's start the timer and get started here. Uh, wage war against the Empire, destroy their reputable forces and slay Emperor Lucius. Welcome back, Underlord. I must say... I wasn't expecting you quite so soon. The transference may have left you feeling a bit foggy in the head. Focus now. I'll try to ease you back into it. Fortunately, this does seem to get easier each time. This is your home realm, the source of your power, and the anchor that binds you to reality. Many years ago, it was destroyed, and you were cast out into formless nothing. Fortunately, you've returned from your exile to once again challenge those who would stand between us and the mortal realm of Kairos. Your resurrection heralds the next phase of our assault upon its wretched empire. Now led by the newly crowned Emperor Lucius. But he is least and final of our worries. It's his generals and the protection of their goddess Kira that will truly test our mettle. Ready yourself, Underlord. Let's begin our war for the overworld. And title drop. The same narrator from Dungeons. Yeah, this is, I believe this is actually the original vo you know, original narrator from the Dungeon Keeper games that they specifically brought him back for this. Wait, so that means he has been doing Stand Repellable and Dungeon series as well. Yep. Okay, I so this is our down. world map. It looks a bit low graphics from what I'm seeing here. Uh, let's see what happens. It still looks, still looks good for how old it is. Uh, I'll 
I'll check on the side here for how old this game is as we go for the first level, Oberon's Realm. for someone to spearhead my campaign. But before we get stuck in, let's refresh that old mind of yours. Let's see. Learn how to play, uh, how, le yeah, learn how to command your powers as an underlord. Okay, war for the. Welcome back, underlord. It's been a long time since you were banished to the ether. You've returned as a husk of your former self, but I've taught far denser underlords <laughs> than you. Let's start with the basics. This is your dungeon core. Yep. Help button. The help button will give you detailed info on almost yeah, any feature in the game. Simply click it. Okay. And according to Wikipedia, the game came out a decade ago, almost in November 2012. <laughs> so yeah, it's officially old. Yeah. That allows you to manifest your malignant will. If destroyed, your consciousness will once again be scattered to the void. Your workers are an extension of your dark will. They have many jobs, but their main focus is in carving out the halls of your dungeon. Put them to work by clicking and dragging your cursor upon the flashing tiles to tag them for excavation. Your workers will now rush forth to dig out and claim the tagged area. Once they have laid down the stones, marking the ground as your own, you will be able to build rooms upon the finished tiles. While your lackeys get to work, look to the east of your dungeon core. This is a gateway, one of the many portals that you'll use to attract minions to your dungeon. Order your workers to dig a path to it now. Yeah, it, it actually looks like... <laughs> A four, uh, a four-way jaw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's they're leveling up. But yeah, these are basically imps, like in the Dungeon Keeper games. Uh, they'll do the basic work, and they'll also uh, some. They'll dig out stuff. They'll uh, summon. Air, they'll claim areas and fortify the walls as well. It seems automatically. And yeah, a higher level a creature is, the better it is at its job, be it, uh, yeah, working or killing. What the oh. heck? Okay, the gate is keep being claimed. Yeah, no. I, I guess the way so you can see it has a Discord uh, link. Minions can enter into your service. But first, you'll need to build the rooms necessary to entice them in. Start by building a barracks. This room will allow your minions to hone their combat skills without the risk of permanent death or disfigurement. Select it and build it by clicking and dragging your hand across the claimed tiles. Most rooms must be built at least three by three in order to function properly. Though the lair and vault are effective at any size. So there's a pig in the training dummy. <laughs> a gnarling has entered your dungeon. Attracted by the barracks, these green-skinned scrappers aren't quite right in the head. And they'll happily hack at your foes until someone is dead. Outside of combat, gnarlings will train themselves within your barracks. You can pick them up with a click if you find them slouching off, then deposit them anywhere within your dungeon with a right click. For further entertainment, you can always put yourself directly into their head by casting possession upon them. Yeah, that's also something that the uh, dungeon keeper did. Oh. You can possess a creature to get in their head and steer them somewhere. I'm not sure if you could actually fight uh, while possessing a th something. Oh, uh, hello there. You can increase uh, the efficiency of props Excludio. in your rooms by fortifying the walls closest to the props. Workers will fortify walls automatically when they've completed all their other tasks. Now that you have some minions, 
You will need to cater for their basic needs. First, build a lair, so the pitiful little meat sacks can get some rest. Uh, as I was going to say, Excujo, uh, if I'm saying it correctly, thank you for the follow. Uh, I hope you'll find this stream entertaining. Okay, let's get these little aids to work. They're leveling up quite well. What was I? I was. I want to say something. All right. Uh, I think I, I'm guessing the reason is 2.0 is he recently made it a bit more up to date, considering how old it is. Uh, you can see they're doing this a lot faster now. Uh, yeah, they, they, they've probably been working on it quite a well. And let's see. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Hello, how are you doing today? Doing well. Uh, how? Yeah, how are you doing? And okay, model. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Your model looks amazing, by the way. Thank you. I, I slapped this thing together myself. <laughs> uh, and now that I get, get to see a bit of chat, I can move that aside a bit so it better fits onto the tab, or at least it should. Or on the overlay, that is. There we go. Okay, now let's make this a layer. Well done. But see how your gold reserves have been depleted. Command your workers to mine some of the nearby gold by tagging the gleaming tiles. They collect and return gold to your dungeon coffers, allowing you to spend it on whatever your dark heart desires. Your core can store up to 16,000 gold pieces. But if that number sounds pitifully small, or if wealth inspires the evil in you, Simply build a vault to store more. Now that you've got a bit of coin in your pocket, you can build a slaughter pan. This room produces scores of micro piglets, a delicacy that will sustain the weak flesh of your minions by filling their bellies with succulent pig flesh. Uh, yeah, there we go. In Dungeon Keeper, these would be chickens. <laughs> which you could pester around a lot. Okay. Uh, what is I played the first one, rock? but I was unable to play the second one. Okay. Your dungeon has been breached. Cast rally upon these spectres, and your minions will immediately sally forth to wreak bloody havoc. Oh, oh, they busted in through there. Uh, I'm not seeing a red. I'm not seeing a rally spell, if that's what... Or is that... No? Uh, where is this rally? There's possession, there's recall. I'm... Oh, there. Well done. Now finish off the rest of these manifestations with a second rally flag. Okay, set, send them there, and then send them out there. We only have these little goblin idiots and our workers. Your gnarlings made short work of those spectres. But see how they still circle the flag. You can dismiss rally flags by slapping them with a right click. This should allow your minions to return to their jobs and tend their needs in a timely fashion. You can cast Recall upon a minion to immediately return them to your dungeon. Though if they are attacked as it channels, then the spell will fizzle into nothing. Okay, that, that is useful. You're on a roll, Underlord. And I've been waiting far too long to begin my war for the overworld. Let us enter the realm of Kairos and continue your retraining against a more fitting enemy. Well done, Underlord. I see it's all coming back quite quickly. I expected nothing less. But there's much still to learn. Why don't we work in a bit of murder while we're at it? It's time for you to enter the realm of Kairos. Okay. Seems we... Okay, there's also some achievements that we can get, apparently, just completing it. Then completing in five minutes and a real keeper build a five by five barracks lair and slaughter pen on level one. Okay. 
And here we have the stuff that we've unlocked. Uh, a homely room for your talented minions to rest in and recover their health. Unconscious minions will be returned to their lair by your workers. All intelligent, all intelligent minions require a lair and the room is effective at any size. Slaughter pen, where an endless supply of micro piglets are bred. Uh, beasts will happily eat straight from the slaughter pen, but your intelligent minions prefer the meat to be cooked in the tavern first. High level intelligent minions may get angry if they are forced to eat from the slaughter pen for extended periods of time. Uh, yeah, as was probably a bit clear, we don't have con direct control over our minions. We can tell them to go to places, but in general, they will just do whatever the hell they want to do. And we actually have to keep them happy so they'll actually go do the stuff that we want them to do. Let's see. Barracks give your intelligent minions a place to hone their combat skills. Training is less effective for higher level minions. Attracts the gnarling. The vault. Each floor, uh, yeah, each tile can store 1000 gold. Effective at the size. Uh, the underworld gateway allows intelligent minions to enter the owner's dungeon. Additional gateways increase the total number of minions attracted. And that's also a thing. We don't act. We don't actively recruit. We have to lure them in to come and work for us. Let's see. What is with the text about with the speech bubble there? Worker, an extension of an under uh, lord's unholy will. Workers are binally dig out the dungeon and don't have any needs to fulfill. Possession seizes a minion's mind so you can see the world through their eyes and control their actions. The host becomes empowered and has increased combat effectiveness. Okay, so we can fight with them. Uh, Gnarling, master of rusty blades and collector of shiny things, works in the barracks. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Oh, took a bit of a moment there. Level 2, keepsake keep. <laughs> Now's the time for a bigger challenge. Before you lies an Imperial Keep, guarded by a certain Lord Rusimov. He had a bit of an accident that melted most of his face, but he's no less vigilant a soldier. He's been sent to guard an object that could threaten our campaign. Get in there, and burn the rest of him, Underlord. <laughs> Yeah, the narrator in this is just going to be so <laughs> deliciously evil, huh? We've punctured the veil of this world through a schism, a point of weakness in the bonds between realms. Unfortunately for us, the Empire has crafted defenses to keep us from the heart of their kingdom. These inhibitors prevent underlords from trespass. But whether it's bone or stone, it can be broken. I suspect that this Empire Force has yet to taste true battle. But before you go engaging them, you'll need to muster up some minions. Oh dear. for me, your time in the ether has left you a weak husk of your former self. In order to reacquire your powers, you will need to access the veins of evil. Open them now, and use a sin to unlock the archive. Okay. And that is up here? Oh, okay. I'm a bit confused. Ain't there supposed to be a succubus hero in this game? Not sure. Unless it is in the sequel, perhaps, then. If I recall, there's something called a... Oh, wait, no, Snotling is, is, uh, is uh, in Dungeons. <laughs> yeah, you might be confusing the two franchises, then. And, yeah, okay, you know, I know there's a female succubus hero. That I know. I didn't expect ah, a skill tree of sorts. This room will allow there. your minions to research additional sins, which can be spent to recover your lost powers. Build one now, to begin researching additional sins. Okay, in general I believe a, an X pattern is a good way to start. Um, in base building in this. We might dig into some unpleasant things though, since we can not see how far some of these pathways go. prioritize objectives in a specific area? Place a worker rally banner in that location. 
Build oh, an dear. archive under Lord. Your forgotten powers are far more impressive than those you currently wield. <laughs> Worker okay. Rally will create a banner around which your workers will prioritize tasks. Slap the banner with the right click to dismiss it. Or right click on its icon to dismiss all Worker Rally flags at once. Okay. You can also slap your workers to get them to work faster for a little bit. Yeah, you can See? do that in dungeons as well. And in dungeons, three you get your first hero that's a dark elf. I remember watching this on YouTube, and there was a succubus that you had to free from a prison. You played okay. as her. Which I guess might be the sequel, or a mission further in. Maybe. Or I think it's still in somewhat tutorial level. actually put down a lair instead of the archive but we can just put that down in the yeah in this area once those two blocks and this one have been claimed uh, I say as they run off get back here you stupid things actually we can put you. that down already and just finish it off as they finish well that off Okay. So there's a grand archive. One shelf. Let's see, a humble lectern for your cultists to be opened. Speak of the devil. Into your dungeon. Attracted by the magical tomes within your archive, these minions will spend most of their time researching sins for you. Though they are weak combatants, they have the power to curse your foes. Making them weak to your other minions' blows. A hungry minion can always find work elsewhere. Build a slaughter pen before your minions starve. Go. Your vaults cannot store any more gold. A cultist has entered your dungeon. You've discovered a perception shrine. Perception shrine? Oh, hello there. Friends of Vision. Of a large area, okay. It's being claimed right now. Mark the Destroyer Andrews. <laughs> he gave each of these names and nicknames. Uh, yeah, didn't you notice that in the early level? Nope. This oh dear. The fog of war over a wide area, allowing you to spy on your enemies and keep track of their movements. Okay. You can see. We can see their vault, we can see their slaughter pen. Where is the chef anyway? <laughs> uh, I guess they're all going to banter. Worked hard to earn a new sin. Use it within the veins of evil to unlock the tavern. This room okay. provides your minions with succulent cooked pig flesh and stout ales. After eating a meal within its hearthed halls, their spirits will be raised, increasing their productivity for a short time. The tavern is an essential room for keeping your minions fed. As they increase in level, they will eventually rebel if there is no tavern to sate their hunger. Build yep. one now, and remember that the tavern is unique and must be built at least three by five in order to be effective. Most things in the old Dungeon Keeper games worked well in 5x5s. Five five and to attract some minions, you actually had to build very specific designs. Like a 7x7 a seven seven or a 5x5 five five with uh, the hatchery, the, their version of the slaughter pen, in the corners. I think that was how you're supposed to attract... Uh, how, how you were supposed to attract vile demons. Which were very tough, but also very cranky demons. Yeah, I recall those. Ugh. I also just remember, I've been watching a game that is like this, called King Beneath the Mountain. Okay, I'm presuming it's with dwarves instead. Yeah, wait, no, it's not King, just Beneath the Mountain, it's called Just Beneath the Mountain. And it's like this, but with dwarves. And the enemies comes in waves. And it it's similar, but has its own little thing. It looks very promising. For the only game that seems like this with dwarves is also called Dwarves. And 
It's an old game and it looks horrible. Probably yeah, the earliest game in Steam. So why are they? Oh, uh, of course they need Ooh. they need a pathway. They need a line to this place to start claiming here. Um, we might as well start upgrading these then. Uh, Lair. Is that that's Lair? Yes. Okay. This way we can hold more. Sp yeah, we can. <clears throat> we can house more minions. And as it said here, oh, union, new units attracted three out of two. Okay, I thought it was a harder limit, but apparently we can get more uh, creatures from a single thing like that. But if we Sometimes, add some more. It real. Okay, I think we need just one more block there for that for the archive to get another one of these uh, lecterns so we can have more people working okay destroy that and then we make a tavern you'll still need a slaughter pan in order to keep your tavern stocked but in a pinch you can always drop some alternative meat into the grinder <laughs> Rooms will yeah. attract a certain number of minions before becoming full. In order to attract more, you will need to expand them. Yep. Mm, that's why it said that. This life is free, Underlord, and you'll regularly need to pay your minions for their hard work. Be sure to keep an eye on your reserves. For if you've not enough gold for their wages, they'll be swift to find gainful employment elsewhere. Fortunately, your minions will return some of their earnings by buying meals within your own tavern. What a delicious arrangement. Yep. That's nice. And also, did that damn pot shoot out the meal as a delivery? <laughs> Basically. Uh, what? Oh, there was an archive that I accidentally built there. Uh, can we just... Yeah. Okay, that was a mistake. I'm not... I don't think we can actually destroy that. So now we have ruined our... <laughs> now we have ruined the 5x5. Scouts, go find what the hell's making all that racket. Rally your minions to defeat these scouts once they breach your dungeon. Let's keep Sarusimov in the dark a little while longer. You should oh try dear. using the lightning and heal spells to assist your minions in combat. Yep, just Pretty sure you should be able to delete something for... Wait, that's a dollar sign. You cannot store more gold. Oh, oh hell there. Okay. That, that almost right, would that be like an extremely up. big flaw. Now, some people thought it was part of the challenge that you, would, you were unable to uh, undo stuff uh, like that. Uh, uh, rally them over here. This and is just... no game, Underlord. Rally your minions to defend your dungeon core. The health of minions is represented by petals surrounding their unit shield. Once no petals remain, a creature will fall unconscious and soon die. Unless return to its lair to recover. I actually need to build a lair so we can get some gnarlings. Bolt of energy, damaging and stunning a single enemy. However, it can only be used within your own territory. There we go. To have your minions ignore rally flags and remain focused on their current objectives. You can assign them to the peace band. They should be okay. back right now. Ugh. Bar the doors. We wait for reinforcements. Look okay, this guy is smarter than most. Cut down these sappers. If I didn't know better, I'd say the Empire is woefully unprepared. An army comprised solely of cultists would swiftly be cut down. Build a barracks to attract gnarlings to round out your army. Once minions are rested, you can leave them to their work or force them to train by dropping them in a barracks. Okay, that's not going to work. Yeah, there are certain types of rock that we can't dig through. 
So yeah, yeah. It, it is very really challenging and sometimes to, to build r good rooms. Yeah, in in part this is in part the Dungeon Keeper series and uh, its uh, spiritual successors are also mm, you know, resource management games. Okay. Oh, it seems that one of our workers has been busy. Yep. <laughs> A little dumbass. Okay, let's rally our forces towards here. The Empire's cowardly priestess supports her allies from a distance through her wholly misled beliefs in the goddess Kira. You'll often find her cowering in the archive and sanctuary. If you don't want to do something, you could at least vocalize it, Underlord. <laughs> okay. And is there any space here to build a barracks? No. There is an area here, though. Where the gold is, it should be plenty enough to build barracks. And there, four by four. Uh, is that yes that is gold so we might as well dig that all out as well hmm. okay optional peace bands above the rally icon oh there we go okay the empire's templar is their core foot soldier dim-witted and pure battle fodder for an underlord despite his training in the barracks so basically, the human version of the gnarling. Fall in combat, your workers will attempt to rescue them and return them to their lair, where they may rest and recover. Okay, they've broken through the door. Why are all of you? Oh, they're all doing ranged attacks. Okay. Uh, move on to their treasure chamber then, and start looting. <laughs> yeah. Well, we could. Should we add this to the streaming list? It could get very fun, but we don't know how long this game might take. It would definitely be a lot of fun. Oh, and there goes the 30 minute timer. Let's finish off this mission and then we'll call it on this one. Yeah. And. As I said, if we do stream this, I could say we could do, like, we do a certain number of episodes, then we take a break, could do another series, then return to it, and do that till it's done, basically. Okay, similar to how we've been doing it with uh, Hard Space Shipbreaker recently. Okay, we could do yeah. a rotation. Yeah, do it be a bit more active rotation. But it won't be like, uh, yeah, every single week or something like that. True. I mean, we do need to find, yeah, we do need to choose stuff to uh, do after we're done with the Monkey Island series. Though that may, that'll still be a while since after Curse of Monkey Island, we still have Escape from Monkey Island and then the Telltale game, yeah, as well. Oh dear, yeah. And yeah, the age of the game is showing a bit. The light is gone. Kira, I am extinguished. It seems almost charitable to put him out of his misery. <laughs> okay. And yeah, to actually finish, I believe we have to we have to destroy these things. And yeah, the the way for us to lose is of course for our th big glowy thing to get destroyed instead. Ugh. The dungeon core, totally not a dungeon heart. Well done, Underlord. You're learning much faster this time. This time? We've barely even started, and you already have a notch on your belt. Well done, Underlord. But there's no rest for the wicked. Two inhibitors still stand between us and the mainland. 
But after your butchery of poor Lord Rusimov, I doubt they'll be as weakly defended. Okay, this he did say something again at he's at the start of doing this again. So, are we stuck in some sort of? How many times have we gotten our asses kicked? <laughs> okay, uh, back. Okay, yeah, th this will definitely be quite fun. It could also get pretty frustrating, possibly, depending on the difficulty. Uh, but we'll just have to deal with that when we get to that. Uh, now, before we move on, there is one more thing I want to actually mention, and it doesn't actually have to do with this game itself, and only indirectly with uh, Dungeon Keeper. And that is a, a fan fiction called Dungeon Keeper Army, which is a very old one because the guy that has, or the guy or gal, uh, I don't specifically know, that has been writing that, has been doing that for 10 freaking years, and it's freaking good. What the heck? So, yeah, if you find yourself just bored and needing to read something at some point, go yeah, go look for Dungeon Keeper Army. I think it's uh, I think it's on fanfiction.net. I know I was reading it somewhere else. It has been a long ass time since I did, but in that time it has probably been a, a few thousand, a few ten thousand words added to that because. They don't do small updates, they they do big updates to it. And which of course means that it takes some time to, for them to update, but it definitely makes it worth it if you ask me. Yeah, that does pros and cons with small and big updates. For now though, we are quitting with this one, so we can move on to the second game that we'll be showing off. Which is... Let it start up a bit. Oh, Steam being... You see with the sinking again. He's been doing that a lot lately. Then I just hide my icons and move this up a bit. Why do you do that? I'm gonna brew some food into the machine. There we go. Yeah, War this Grove. is <laughs> War Grove, not Grove. Grove would be with one O. Whoops. I had my headphones on in the kitchen on, and the music made me wonder, wait, is he playing Pokemon now? <laughs> nope. Uh, let's see. Excujo, damn, the animation looks cool. Yeah, it... it but you can say what you can say a lot of things about chuckle fight face uh, specifically that they're a bunch of chuckle fox uh, just look up just, just look up a video on uh, the development of you know, <clears throat> starbound and you'll see why i call them a bunch of chuckle fox basically the long and short of it is they had they didn't pay people for their work uh, yeah many of them were minors and all that yeah. well, minors minors were under 18 and in, in 16 and all that and also, I don't know if you noticed it, but there's a Starbound character in this game. Yep, There's Naru. Bound. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if... I've, I know she's a fan favorite. I'm unsure why she's in this game. Because she's a fan favorite? Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, that. Yeah, but just feels a bit weirdly used. Okay. Let's take a check on the campaign. I did play this game somewhat before, but I'm not I'm not very good at it, I'll just say. So let's see if it'll just start us over. Let's see. Oh, we can actually co-op this. Okay. Uh yeah, it it's remembered. Uh, can I start a new? Let's see. Uh, options advanced. Is there a way to reset everything? 
because otherwise that's going to make things a bit uh, difficult to stream if we have to start halfway through. Um, hmm. You can actually change around the difficulty somewhere, or somewhat. But... Let's see. Uh, let's do a quick save and exit. Story campaign, and yeah, it just puts me right in here. Maybe we, maybe it will do redo. <clears throat> maybe it will redo the story bits if we redo the levels as well. Yeah, the beginning, under cover of night, High Vampire Sigrid makes a daring attack on Cherrystone Castle. Starting the timer. Okay, it do redoes the story as well. Run rainy, yeah. One rainy night at Cherrystone Castle. So what are us giving you the spooks? Did you hear that? Get it out, it's just thunder. But I'm going to patrol the throne room. Hey, wait for me. A oh, bunch of cowards. Oh, hello there. Cowards jumping at shadows and dropping their guards. Yeah, they, those are some big ass bad ears. Getting to you know, the king shouldn't be much of a challenge. There they are. There he is, all alone in his chambers. How convenient. Fewer guards are dispatched, the quicker this will be. But some unfortunate wretches still stand in my way. I'll start by defeating that one over there. Yep, we just do selection like this, move like that, and then choose our actions, and there we go. Are you afraid? <laughs> Boy, uh, yeah. thing? Yep. It's time. Time my daughter learned the truth. How do I tell her? Uh, yeah, this game basically plays as a medieval version of Advanced Wars. I'll make my way towards the king's chambers. See? Go there. One more bit. Uh, just... Okay, it, it won't let me cancel, but basically it was showing the the range of how far we can move and how far we at can attack. Since this character is melee, they can attack only one square further, which is the hollowed out one uh, squares. Mercy, a long time ago, before Cherry Stone was Cherry Stone, no. This is laughably easy. There we go. And we can in immediately go into an attack. Merciful. Goodbye. Uh, the the in-game animations are simple, but quite well animated, I'd say. Oh yeah, it, it is very lively pixel art. And the music is quite good as well. Uh, there's a specific track that I, I really like, and well, it's the fan favorite one from Starbound's track. <laughs> Of course it is. Let's see. There was once a kingdom called Cacophony uh, and the war known as the Great Distance. But, uh, this is a sad thing about this. I think this game would be more popular if, if the... Yeah, the thing about what happened, uh, the Resorbans uh, development had come true. For it was only recently it came out, for some, some year ago. This knowledge is too great a burden, no oh, mercy. But yeah, it, as it is, if they only had paid the developers for the Starbound one, then uh, I think this game would be better to proceed, for I think many people are avoiding Chocolate Fish at the moment. Yeah, they, they just have a stink to their reputation. Yeah, this sort of home uh, this game, I think. Let's see, I just need to select an unoccupied, unoccupied tile and pick Overview. Here we go. Big ass screen and it, it's actually, it, let's see, the screen provides me with objectives and statistics. Hmm, so many humans, how unpleasant. Still, I, I can avoid most of them. 
Yeah, there's 43 of them here. <laughs> That's a lot. As my objective says, I'm here for the king. S rank turns. Okay. I can close this now and return to my task. Okay. <laughs> Just clicking anywhere did that. Time to defeat a few ha more hapless guards and make my way to the king's chamber. You'd think there'd be a lot more... <laughs> Uh, guards in the specific paths from the front door to the freaking king. Goodbye. And yeah, they actually switch sides depending on where, from which direction you attack. It's just nice. It's just it... Yeah. I was gonna say, the only thing that annoys me in some of these games is they still have the rule, I think it's called mirroring, like you have one shield on one side, and so on and so on. Then they turn around and they switch places with the shield and sword. I hate that. The only game I know that's pixelated that they, that they did not do that on is Sar. From what I read, and with the, the, the special edition, you no, know, with both, I, from what I heard, with these both versions of Monkey Island 2, they actually didn't mirror LeChuck's uh, model. With, so he does, uh, or at least should, look different if he's walking left or right. I oh, that's personally good. didn't notice that much. Yeah, it's... I think I always noticed that sometimes in Monkey Island, but those games you suspect them to not do that. <laughs> well, mostly strategy game like like this, Heroes of Mighty Magic, and Age of Empires, the old ones will do it a lot. Let's see. It's a very long story about something that happened a very long time ago. Okay, take out this guy. How foolish. <laughs> Can we even reach him in the next turn? Very long time ago indeed. Why can't the past stay the past? And there we go. <laughs> At last. You? How, how did you... What? Secret. <laughs> Humans are so frail. You understand what you've just done? We'll start a war. Or the inane squabble of children. Where is the key? Safe hands. You'll never have it. The key's in safe hands, far from the grasp of a monster like you. <laughs> safe hands? Before you die, understand this. Nothing is safe for me. Listen. You're making a mistake. Hush now. <laughs> Still the key eludes me. No matter. It's close. I can feel it. So, yeah. Victory? Question mark? Good question mark. An S rank, not bad. Yes. Well done, princess. Your skill with the cherry blade improves further yet. Yet further. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Cherry blade. Woof. Woof. It's all right, Caesar. It's just one of the royal guards. Go, damn Rick. This is important. You disturbed the princess's lessons. The king, my lord. The king has been killed. What? No! Father. I'm sorry. Mercy, I'm so sorry. <sighs> Who did this? Sir, the assailant appears to have been a vampire. The Fellheim Legion? Princess Mercia, the murder of your father is an act of war. You must defend the kingdom. War? We're at war.
Yeah, that is how that started. <laughs> Without it. Okay, I said this. It had an interesting start, but that scene felt a bit rushed. Let's see. I believe there's supposed to be some uh, chatter and such on the main screen here, but since that, uh, since that all, uh, yeah. since that has already been played on this file, uh, save file, that's not popping up. I will look into just deleting my save data if that's possible somewhere. Uh, uh, again, that's it's not showing up anywhere here. To, uh, yeah, that depends a more if you choose to do a stream on this. But True. I don't see that YouTubers do some playthroughs, then they will do one or two, then or they will do a several and just never finish. Yeah, it could just be because uh, yeah, more and more of Chocofish's bullshit came out. Possibly, or maybe just some uh, troubles with the games itself or something. Maybe. For now, we have the second mission here. Several months later. My queen. Congratulations on your uh, coronation, Queen Mercia. Emmerich, you really think I'm ready to be a queen? I have no doubt. You are your father's daughter. Hmm. I hope you're right. Ah! Majesty, Belham scouts have breached the border. They're here in Cherrystone. Let's go. I can do this. <laughs> I know you can. And off we go, ditching the crown. <laughs> Wait, Your Majesty, your crown. <laughs> and here we go. Spelta warriors are Felheim troops. We must defeat them all to secure the re this region. We should begin by attacking the closest dread swords with our unit of swordsmen. Right, let's get this over and done with. There we go. We send them it, it into has, the woods. Yes, people, I have noticed that the Felheim legions are undead Scandinavians. <laughs> Basically. Go. They counterattack, but because they've been hurt a lot, they deal a lot less damage. Notice the numbers that have appeared next to the two battling units. Yeah. yeah. There's a little number next to each of them. Eight and five. That is how many troops are still left, or how much strength the unit still has. These represent the unit's health. They appear uh, when it drops below 95%. The number five indicates that the dread sword is down at around 50% health. Mm. My swordsman is down to about 80. Got health. Got it. Very well. And let's attack the red sword with a second swordsman. There we go. Attack. And yeah, this will show how much damage about you'll be dealing. So in any case, we are killing these skeletons. Oh. And he's going to point that out right now. <laughs> My queen, may I interject for just a moment? When selecting a target, a damage preview will appear above its head. The damage preview indicates what damage will be dealt by both units during combat. Sounds handy. You see, the health of a unit suggests more than how close it is to defeat. The more damage the unit takes, the weaker its attack power becomes. So a healthy unit is a stronger unit? Indeed, but it looks like your swordsman will do just fine here. Yeah, this is where, th how you meet yeah, this is where being tactical comes into play in more than one way. Because often you'll be limited in the amount of troops you'll actually have. What? More, more on then? Seems like they're not giving up quite yet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, jaw. Yeah. Oh, and more troops of our own. Friendly reinforcement. Well, friendly reinforcements have arrived. Just in the nick of time. Look, it seems like we've been provided with a new unit type, Pikeman. This might be a good time for you to learn about critical hits. Uh, critical hits? Yes. 
All units have conditions under which uh, their attacks are stronger. This is one place where the game differs from Advanced Wars by adding in some an, an, uh, an extra system. We call these attacks critical hits. I've never heard of those. Don't worry, my queen, this information is easy to find. Let me show you how to find information about a unit's crit. We right click, we get more info on them, like how much they can move in a general description, their current defense based on the, the where they are standing, and a bunch of this where I have no idea of, and what they are effective against here. This is the tile info screen. Here you can find useful information about our selected units. These parts give us a good overview of the units. Critical hits when adjacent to another spearman. Yeah, you can bring up this info screen on any unit, terrain, or structure. Open it off, uh, use it often, and you'll learn fast. Alright, then make sure to check it often. When you're ready, you can close this window. There you go. Very well. You should make sure that the pikemen stick together. Got it. Okay. Send you here. Okay. Personally, what I would have done was send this one onto the bridge, and then this one over here. But then this one would, this one wouldn't ha would have attacked without a critical hit on this one. But this one would have struck a crit on this one. Let's attack the red sword with our second pikeman by going there. And there we go. Full kill. Let me draw your attention to the damage preview once more. Oh, the arrow is flashing. Well spotted, a flashing arrow in the damage preview is a good sign. It indicates that you're about to land a critical hit. So yeah, we'll want those whenever we can. Oh, in this game. Because yeah, an instant hit like that is just going to leave them without any chance to counterattack. Thanks to the placement of the first pikeman, the second pikeman uh, dealt a critical hit. She learns fast. <laughs> keep your pikeman together. Uh, keeping your pikeman together will ensure a stronger offense. When encountering a new unit type, it's important to learn about their crits. I'll leave you to defeat the rest of these Valheim troops. Thank you. Eric, I couldn't do this without you. Let's see. How is it with the swordsman? Basic infantry, useful for capturing structures, critical hit when adjacent to its commander. And we have no commander unit on the field yet. So we can't actually activate that. For now though, we can attack these in a bit of a trade. We'll lose an equal-ish amount, but we'll... Actually, we are at the same level of health. <laughs> I was going to say we're losing a bit more, but no. Finish them off with this set of uh, swordsmen. And now it's their turn. Every unit can only take one action at a time. Move and attack. Okay, we've got those troops bottlenecked. But this, these guys are simply too weak to fight. They would... They would, yeah, they wouldn't deal much damage. So what we can do is just have them move aside, and then bring the fresh, fresh troops, who will do a lot more damage. It's the last of them. Well done, my queen. <laughs> we did it. Okay, there's a yeah. I gotta admit, there's something a bit off with that giant ass smile. Yes, it had an old smile to begin with. And I don't know how old she was supposed to be. Hmm. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably hinted at or said somewhere. Yeah, for... I doubt the 918, for she looks like she might be about your or my age or more. Probably 30 or so. We'll have to, have to see if they bring it up or not. Yeah, for if they say 18, I'll call bullshit. Good start, but Velheim won't stop there. We must remain vigilant. Uh, um, 
What? You said Valheim. <laughs> uh, Wrong game, back. Ilian. Yes. Getting great in numbers. Uh... A whole horde of skeletons. Indeed, and much else besides. I'd forgotten you had so little experience with the undead. <sighs> Cheriston is normally so peaceful. I've never seen him here before. Now they're coming, and they won't stop. They won't stop coming, and they won't stop coming, and they won't stop coming. <laughs> I still don't know where the hell that's from, but they keep hearing it. An undead army. All undead but one. They've spoken in your lessons of their leader, Valder. The living man and... Yeah. The necromancer of great power. I haven't forgotten. Well, we should make a move. The undead are likely to be advancing upon other parts of the kingdom. Uh. Emmerich, do you think Valder will come to Cherry Stone himself? Yes. It's your majesty, I do. What the heck? I think I remember. S <laughs> <laughs> your majesty, majesty, wait! wait! Okay, yeah, I felt like you do some voice acting for once. <laughs> but I have to say, I think one of the people had issues. I think the. What have been the dog? Hmm. Okay. Like, I think mean, some, liked, some liked the dog until the dog got his own missions. And he only just moves and people follow his orders. I feel like, I think some liked it, but the moment that I just felt that it was a bit too ridiculous. <laughs> okay, I do remember that happening. I'm not too uh, sure yeah. though what else. Uh, actually, I forgot to turn on the power for one of the lamps, or I brought the power supply. Yeah, I, I remember that being one of the last videos, a Wonderbot, I think it was called. Uh, I think, yeah, it must have been Wonderbot to watch you doing that. He, he, I think he made 16 episodes. Hmm. But yeah, after that, he didn't do more, I think. And he didn't even finish the game, even. Kingdoms are run with Valheim soldiers. We have to do something. Hmm? We will hold what land we can. Hmm. Maybe if we... Not so fast. Huh? Who are you? <laughs> I'm the person that's going to smash, bash, and pulverize you. Uh, Alright. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Okay, some characters is well designed, while others are. Like her, rough. Did you see that? The Velheim horde, the Velheim hordes just captured the village to the east. They will attempt to claim the neutral village to the east next until we stop them. And let's stop yes. them. Luckily, a Cherrystone Ranger is here to help us. The Rangers, are, uh, Rangers are units that can attack enemies from a distance. Let's move it into a position from where it can attack any approaching undeads. Sounds good. Aristotle yeah. range. For some reason, the first thing that came to my mind was uh, Yellowstone Rangers. <laughs> uh, Jogi has been a very, very bad bear if uh, <laughs> if the ranger turned to archery to end his shenanigans. <laughs> uh, yeah, the art, yeah, archer. A standard range unit that can attack from a distance, but can't actually attack up close. So it's a good thing to put them behind troops or behind impenetrable terrain like these mountains. In this position, our ranger can attack any enemy units that approach from the west. Well. When you want to enter a turn, select an unoccupied map tile and select end turn. There you go. And then, uh... Evil Wiki the Pirate is coming at us again. <laughs> Remembering to check the unit info screen to learn about critical hits. Yeah. 
disappear, then you know that uh, the rangers crit if they attack without moving. We'll attack the dread sword without moving the ranger now. Yeah, they have an attack range of three. Now we need to select the tile from which to perform the attack. Which is this one. Since we don't want the archer to move, we simply select the same tile again. There we go. And 30 to 100. That's a very big uh, variable. And lucky. <laughs> that was probably just uh, pre-programmed in. <laughs> we did it. We may have defeated those soldiers, but it's not over yet. The enemy owns a barracks. It will enable them to recruit new units. Fortunately, we have access to a barracks of our own. We should select it to recruit a new unit at once. Okay, I'm on it. Yeah, barracks. It, it does what any barracks does in a game. It makes more units. This yeah. barracks lets you recruit three different unit types. Swordsmen, pikemen, and rangers. That's right, but due to our current funds, I can only afford a swordsman right now. A single swordsman can make a big difference. Let's recruit one now. Yep, we have to pay for these, and I believe we get money from the villages, I think. And we choose where to put them down. Note that each barracks can only recruit a single unit per turn. Right, I'll make sure to remember that. Yeah, I feel like the old style is very mixed. Could be that they pulled the same shit here. Let's select our uh, new swordsman in order to move and capture the village. Actually, if they did that same thing again, I think that may pull them into court and cause a lot of problems for them. Okay, why the hell am I getting tired at 4 p.m.? Uh, it's Sunday and uh, the world... The thing is, wait, have you turned your clock forward today? Yeah, we did that a few days back already. Yeah, we did today in Sweden. Excellent work, my queen. Villages bring in 100 gold every turn, so they're incredibly important for the war efforts. But because more gold means we can recruit more units. Right. In fact, we can cripple the enemy's income by taking their village yes. to the west. To capture a village that is owned by a different faction, we must first defeat it. Mm. Then, I'll recruit more, uh, then I'll recruit more units straight away and order them towards that village. Some units are more effective than, than others at defeating structures such as villages. I advise you to rely on the pikeman's powerful crit for this job. All right, I'll recruit pikemen and send them towards the village. From what I remember, getting villages is a pain in the ass. But for now... Uh, yeah, but more thing about... I think I've seen... Not watched them, but I've seen reviews recommend to me that seem to hint that it's... That the game was very average. So, again, if the game was average with Shokushifish reputation that came up way before this one released. Yeah. Being Elbrus is definitely bad. Enemy, no, enemy reinforcements to the north. They'll not be, not be heading towards your northern villages. Should have known they wouldn't make this easy for us. Mm -hmm. Suggest you don't leave the northern pass unattended. And make sure to leave a unit to protect the northern villages. And that unit can be the ranger. So let's put them... Actually, they can go over there. And... Yeah, move the pikemen forwards. And we order another one. Put them there. They can't move on the same turn. Let's bring our knight forwards. And then see if we can end this quickly. Yeah, they do get the first attack in on us. This hurts quite a bit. We still take out half of there. Okay. Now we can move you forwards. You can attack. We're 
Okay, just that's just playing a kill. You, you think you buffed him by having more spearmen near them? True, which is why I moved him forwards. Also, we can check out how far a unit can move and attack by holding down the mouse on them. And yeah, these really? guys are going to be within attack range. And our units can just move through each other. So let's send the swordsmen forwards. And might as well get yet another spearman or pikeman. Yeah. I, I feel like I feel like I should probably at some point later watch a review of this game to see Yeah, what just what happened for it came up on YouTube a little bit, then suddenly just silence. Okay, basic infantry, these guys are just us, the swordsmen, right next to their commander. That's the 30 minutes mark going off. So let's try to finish this off pretty quickly. Okay, that's half of their force already gone. This one will be able to attack our, uh, the archers. But other than that... Some, they had some defenses in by being in the woods. Yep, they have three defense, which should lower their, the damage that they take. But this game, Spisa has a lot of potential, but... Yeah, it also feels like there's something missing and all just off with it. Can be. Now a single loss. And if it's, as you said, it's, it gets very annoying with the villages. And worst case, they also fail with the story. Uh, that I can't yeah. say. Yeah. Uh. Then I'm talking about the hypothetical, like if the story is bad. Okay. Along with the reputation, all thing could explain why not many people not were not bothered with the game. Okay, I didn't see that those. Okay, so they can attack in range, but they just deal a lot less damage. Yeah, getting the first strike in is a big deal in this game. So I just let's... noticed something that, that is kind of, for some reason, annoying me. And that be? The pikesmen's pikes are wobbly. <laughs> uh, I don't think you see. want a wobbly spear, or wobbly pike for that matter. Move you up here. Move you back. Move you up. I won't get a bonus like this. But for now, let's move you over there. And attack the village. And almost take it down in one hit, but of course they will counterattack. So let's get into the woods here and finish this off. So you can see that you can see the commanders' portraits you know, portraits change during the combat. There, how did that you happen? Nice. Excellent. You've cleared the enemy from the village. You should capture it and secure it before Ragnar takes it back. Got it? Oh, we can't capture it at the moment. So let's just get yet another freaking pikeman, even though we don't really have a use for them anymore now. Still going after the archers because they are the most dangerous units. And there they go. And these guys. Quite a bit of damage, but less so than they would have taken out in the open plains. So you just move over there, capture this thing. Will it fill up? Okay, it'll fill up the, with the same amount of health. Or no, half of the health, it seems. Well done, with no villages, the enemy has no income. You'll notice that a captured structure never begins with full health. In fact, it starts with the equivalent of half the capturing unit's health. Okay. 
So if a unit with 40% health captures a village, this village starts with 20% health. Yes, then now we should destroy their barracks to completely remove them from this region. Okay, let's do it. And let's move you there. And reinforce. Okay, I'd forgotten that. I believe that's just to, to refill. But let's strike at these first and take them out completely. Okay. Then we have these two here. You move up and wait, and you just stab. Alright. You were sending forwards. And yet again, I'm asking for pipemen. And now that they're starved for funds, we can just move in and attack. Uh, and we should still be somewhat careful. Actually, okay, that was a bad move because now we can't get them into a position where they can critical hit. So let's instead do as much damage as we can. So likely suicide knights. Yep. <laughs> And move you oh forwards. And those two are going to take too long to get back. So in turn... Actually, do we need to fight? Oh, they're attacking the... Okay, go ahead and waste your time with that. Oh, they bought a new unit. Okay. Uh, you... You can almost take this one out and then we can finish them off. And we can skip the animations. Oh, you could take them out just completely. Okay, you there. You there. I believe roads give a small speed bonus. They let you move further ahead. You are going to... Actually, how far can they attack? You are going to pull back to there. And end turn. Okay, this is taking a bit longer than I suspected. You... there... Oh, that's... wait, is that a block? Is that completely blocked? Okay, then that... yeah, that's a bit of a mistake. Um, let's soften this guy up. Skip that over. And then I just approach with the rest of these. We'll finish this level and move to the next. Oh, come on, another one. There's also a good chance that the computer might actually be cheating with how much money they actually make. Okay. Mm. I'm taking... Okay, I think I get what's going on. They can't actually move through forest patches. They can only move through one at a time or something. Since, well, it's Possible. forest. And I think I start to see a pattern. Good, now they're out of gold. What I was saying, I think I see the pattern where many YouTubers may have quit the game. Like, one button may take just way too long. Yep. Especially with the dual caption the villains back and forth all the time. It might be fun at the beginning, but if it happens too much and... Yeah... It, it just gets uh, boring after a while. Yep. Mm. Yep, they're completely out. So they are completely harmless now. And... Oh. Okay, attack. Okay, it'll also counter-attack, so I probably shouldn't have done that. It's a good amount of damage. It'll go down in the next turn. You did well, for the forest protected you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, not that. And turn, okay. This one is going a bit long. Okay, you finish it off. Wait, why do you need gold for skeletons? This is not happening. 
Ambrick, we did it. Good work. Go away. <laughs> I said, go away. Sheesh. And a dead foot twitch. What are... I said, go away. Oh, it's you. Yeah. Uh... I didn't mean to disturb you. You didn't disturb me, I was lying in wait. <laughs> uh, alright. Shut up! This isn't over. Uh, yeah, not much of a threat. Okay, but yeah, that's Vorgroove. A bit iffy, but possible. So, for now, yes, we... I said we, we should do some investigation war group. Next Just up though, we're doing, yeah, we're moving to another war game because all of these have war in the name. Uh, come on, let me move the freaking. Let me move the freaking. Let's see. Not why. Do you not have an option to move the freaking... There we go. I had to blindly grab it because it vanishes the cursor the moment it moves on to it. Share to the gear so we can also see. And yeah, enjoy. More of us are coming. This planet will be ours. You lost this war before you started, fool. <laughs> Started there for a moment, okay. Yep, that's uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Warhammer 40k, Dawn of War 2. <laughs> also, I apparently, when this I one. Yep. Yeah, I, w I was thinking about doing the first uh, Dawn of War. I played that, uh, but I'd have to use my physical copy, and it was just easier to install, uh, well, this from Steam. And also, apparently, when I try to rub out and rub at my ear for some reason vc face takes that as me taking on a surprised face so yeah no clue what the hell is that about but yeah the dawn of war games uh, the first one was uh, very well received the second one was liked and the third one uh, people don't like to speak of the third one so let's not uh, okay we have the original version, we have Chaos Rising, and then there is another um, campaign, so to speak, Retribution. 
Uh, though I forget specifically what happens with that. With this one in the original, we will be yeah, we will be playing as the Space Marines, and that took a bit of a moment to load in this bit. So yeah, start a new campaign. Might as well call it that. Uh, let's see, difficulty affects enemy damage and defense, recruit, sergeant, captain, and primarch. Unforgiving difficulty, choose if you dare. <laughs> And choose if you're an expert at real-time strategy. Choose if you've played real-time strategy games before. Uh, let's just go with that then. And choose if you're new to real-time strategy games. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm good at RTS, but I am familiar with them. Subsector Aurelia. This cluster of worlds stands on the very edge of the Imperium of Man. From this frontier came the Blood Ravens, a chapter of the Emperor's own Space Marines. Okay, bad audio balancing there. Captain Davian Thule and a handful of Space Marines lead the raw recruits defending these worlds. Another Space Marine joins this desperate battle. A newly promoted commander, ready to lead in our darkest hour. You are this Space Marine. And you will tip the balance toward victory. And you name him Stream. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Day one. Stand with your brothers on Calderas. Commander Stream, you are Stream, a Space Marine recently promoted to the rank of Force Commander. You have been sent to Calderas to help Captain Davian Zul stave off a massive orc invasion. And such is your reputation, the chapter expects that you alone will be enough to tip the balance of the fight and save Calderas. Man of few words, uh, words, you are renowned for keeping calm in high pressure situations and finding a path to victory in the face of overwhelming odds. And press any button to continue, which is always nice when you have stuff to read. Oh, yeah. Calderas. We Blood Ravens select our initiates from this world's fierce warriors. Calderas is the cradle and the future of our chapter. Now, the orcs would take it from us. This, we cannot allow. Control of our flanks. Move north and provide support. Okay. Something I have to say here, especially about the trailer and all of war games. Unlike most Warhammer games nowadays, at least for the game, we actually get to see space means actually get kicked, uh, kicked back, and all that. For in other trailers and such, the space means basically invincible. Here, yeah, they then we have to struggle a bit. Yeah, I haven't kept much of an ear on what's been going on with the uh, Warhammer stuff, except for that uh, Games Workshop is apparently basically committing uh, a <laughs> fandom suicide since they decided to try and ban all fan stuff, even yeah. when all fan stuff is what's keeping the damn franchise alive. Yeah, and that, that's because they want to focus more draw the fans towards their own uh, stream site. This is a bad move in that regard. However, it's the only doing that for 40k. So if you don't fantasy Warhammer, 
They will not care. They only do that for 40k for some reason. Probably because... Hey, much... oh. Random oh. freeze. Okay, that was odd. Uh, yeah, uh, what were you to say? Uh, probably because uh, a lot less people have actually learned of uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Yeah, and uh, there's more people that like warm fantasy than Sigmar. And also, I see many traders of Space Marines and warm games. And when, when there's Space Marines, Space Marines will always be, almost always be the most OP thing of the Invincible. Okay. Our captain here has two victory, which is a charge ability, which we saw used right there earlier. Which basically knocks any enemies in the way, well, out of the way. And we have some stimulants kits, which we obviously need. Uh, can we control... Why the hell are you phrasing the wrong way? Can we control you? No, we can't. So, what dumbass thought would it be a good idea to... Uh, where is our force commander? Oh, why did you run all the way back here? Okay, just rendezvous with them, then we'll probably get control of them. Let's point this dumbass in the correct direction. Okay, we can't interact. Okay, it has been quite a long time since I played this. <laughs> so I have no freaking clue anymore of how specifically we need to do things. Okay, standard RTS stuff. I'm pressing A to give an attack order. Then clicking somewhere with the left mouse button to... Well, give them the command to head there and attack anything in their path. We found some loot. Which is something they added in on this game. Uh, this game is partially an RPG. Whereas the original Dawn of War was a complete RTS. A, a pure RTS game. Well fought, Commander. But the Greenskins will not give us much time before they attack again. I need you and Sergeant Tarkas to take charge of driving the Orcs back. Move up to the ruins east of here, and prepare to repel the next orc wave. Okay, Tarkas. Oh, there they are. Tarkas reporting. Uh, they're, they're the sergeant we started with. Uh, also, when we're moving around the mouse like this, you can see green dots and yellow dots appear. That's the cover. Green dots is good cover, yellow dots is average cover. Over to here. So, I also remember, it, Game Boy should have admitted that they promoted Space Marines too much. Yep, stay in cover, you dumbasses. So I kind of happily actually making a sister of battle game and a wall a Mechanicus game as well. If you're talking about the VR game, I've from what I've heard, it it sucks. VR game? Yep. Those orcs have opened a path through the hills. I somehow. don't think this is the battle one is a VR, and see for it's not released yet. Okay, I bl there was, or there is a Warhammer 40k VR game, and I believe that was put you in the the boots of one of these sister uh, of silence. Uh, is that the correct term? Or, or one of the correct term? On our Tactical squad, heading out. I think sister silence is part of another group. A higher gr rank group, even. But I did not know that one. Dude, they are releasing many Warhammer games. Uh, uh, Sisters of Battle or something? Sisters yeah, of Sisters Silence of is Dishonored. Ready. This way, yeah, that too. Okay. But, are oh we... yeah, there's Necromonda. Which is, where you can play several crime gangs. So that one did not go well. Do Necromonda higher gun apparently went better? Uh, somewhat. Uh, apparently it was. It started off a bit shit, but they patched out a bunch of things pretty quickly from what I heard. The green yeah, hence why it's better than the other Necromonda game. 
entrance by any means necessary. But the Ultimate Commando game that came first when yeah, they basically did not fix it. A well-placed grenade should ignite it and bring the whole cave down. Okay. Of course, you know, with these abilities, the ring, the circle is the area in which we can actively use it at the moment. Passage again anytime soon. But the leader managed to escape through the tunnel before we could kill him. That was our chance to cut this invasion off at the head. He will show himself again, Tarkas. And when he does, we will be ready. Thunderhawks are en route. Prepare for extraction. Yeah, we can also just send them, uh, point them somewhere, and they will do it after they get close enough. Let's see, improved chain swords. Mark X Hell's Teeth Chainsword, a close combat weapon of choice among the Adeptus Astartes, which is the official name of the Space Marines in universe. The Chainsword's monomolecular blades slice through most targets, and its silhouette is a symbol of the Imperium, effective against infantry and lightly armored enemies. And well, yeah, you can fact, different, see uh, the different stats. Well, no, fun fact where they use the name Adeptus Astartes. Go ahead. Just so they could copyright it. <laughs> I believe there is there was something I a while back that I realized after seeing an overly sarcastic productions video. And there is a, there is a different name for Dionysus, I believe it was. Uh, that is basic. That is like almost only one letter away from Astartes, if not a single letter away from them, which would basically make Space Marines, uh, yeah, the, the, the drunk Marines of Dionysus. <laughs> and yeah, characters oh, get God. experience. Oh, God, so remember, give Russia back to try to copyright the war. Welcome aboard, Strike Cruiser Armageddon. And failed. Calderas is currently facing a massive orc invasion that threatens to spill over to the entire sector. Urgent distress signals are coming from other nearby sectors, but we must concentrate our efforts here. I need you to take charge of an assault that's stalled on the surface below. Drop to the point marked on the planet map and start pushing into the orc's flank. And uh, yeah. Oh, hello. Okay, this is just to show that they have a level that we can do, spend a skill point on. And yeah, this, this fills up these bars and gives perks for each of the one, each of these milestones that we can reach. Like Zealous, the charge range of to victory increases when its energy cost, oh, while its energy cost decreases. Okay, making it a lot more usable. Uh, battle Cryer Unlock Ability. For a limited time, the Force Commander performs special attack with every hand-to-hand -hand strike, dealing damage and knocking enemies to the ground. Additionally, the Force Commander cannot be knocked down for the duration. Okay. Nice. And then we but can I, just I, I, equip I, I, better I, stuff. I like Warhammer for the K and Fantasy. Do I understand they want to protect their IP, but there's a right way and wrong way to do it. And of late, they are... Yeah, they are we going overboard wrong. with it. Yeah, I, I mean, not talking in detail about it. There's YouTubers that explain to it about it way better than me. So if you people are curious about it, there's some YouTubers you can look up. Uh, it should be easy to find. Okay, give them each but a different yeah. weapon. Uh, taunt. Mm -hmm. uh, we could also give our force commander the bolt that's gone here. But that would change him from a melee, from a a, a melee and ranged attack, uh, yeah, melee and ranged a mixed attack uh, uh, unit to a full uh, ranged one. But we want him, or we for now we would uh, like him to be a mixture. And we can we can still undo any skill points that we uh, put in some, in a character. I don't think you can fully reset them though. Yeah, here's our next mission. Eventually, we'll get more choices as things go. Uh, let's see. Retake the Hamlet, Argus outskirts. The Badlands communities east of Argus settlement serve as a buffer between the desert wilds and the cap uh, and the, yeah, the planetary capital. Let's see. Communication array. Capturing a communications array on the planet will allow 
uh, emplaced planetary defense forces to focus artillery strikes to a specified location. Okay, that's nice. And an automated foundry. I believe these we can find these in the mission somewhere then. Automated foundries can be found on many worlds assisting in the production of arms and munitions while serving the various needs of the populace. Securing them will, <clears throat> will grant additional support and allow the directed deployment of tarantula turrets during a mission. Okay. The Greenskins have taken over a hamlet outside Argus. This hamlet sits on a vital supply route, and all of Calderas could fall if we do not dislodge them. Sergeant Avatus and his squad of Devastator Space Marines held the hamlet alone, but they were finally overwhelmed. You must retake the hamlet and drive the orcs back. To aid in this, I am assigning Sergeant Cyrus and his squad of scouts to your command. His infiltration expertise should prove invaluable. And here we see what our reward will be, just a flimsy bit of level 2 power armor. And again, flimsy is a bit of a misnomer since Space Marine armor is actually really freaking tough. It's just that everything else that is trying to kill them is also really fucking tough. Yeah. And good at killing. Yeah, Basically, it is. These, it, 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 go on. Basically, uh, these things, they're pistols at standard, uh, fire 50 caliber rounds. And oh, they, no, they only get bigger. You know, actually, you no. Know, uh, 50 caliber explosive uh, <laughs> rocket uh, propelled rounds or something like that, I believe it was. Actually, yes. It is a small rockets. And it has been tr tried in real life, a smaller version. Do okay. Let me guess, it blew uh, up. No, but you probably don't want to fire too much with it either, for it may shatter the gun afterwards. <laughs> and yeah, even their pistols are just basically handheld RPGs, and it only goes up from there. Yeah, Let's they see. are basically made for extreme conditions. A veteran of centuries, uh, Sergeant Targus, tactical squad, a veteran of centuries of campaigning. Yes, these base marines get fucking old. Uh, millennia is the standard of lifespans. Uh, Targus leads his tactical marines into combat with confidence and a steely demeanor. Slow to anger, Targus is a rock-solid second-in-command and tactical uh, expert tactician. Targus served with Davian Thule in the Cronus campaign and quickly established himself as one of Thule's most trusted advisors. Tarkus twice distinguished himself in the campaign, first against the Tau, and once more against the Necrons, and was awarded Terminator Honors for his valor. Okay, Terminator armor is even <laughs> is even tougher to kill than Space Marine armor. We should be out stopping you reaching in like we did to the town. Wait, did you hear something? Time to armor. Cyrus to Armageddon. In position. Fun fact! Scout Marines are the newbies of Space Marines. Yep. Avatus, the squad baby, baby, the baby Marines. Is still alive. <laughs> the orcs incapacitated him, but apparently could not finish the job. Avatus is too stubborn to die. So it would seem, Cyrus. An orc guard position stands between you and Sergeant Avatus. Approach with stealth and eliminate the green skins. Understood. And yeah, that's Stephen Blum. <laughs> that I'm pretty freaking sure. So a quick check. Do we have subtitles? Is no show subtitles on? Okay, so it's not. It's the. It doesn't do the enemy chatter even in cutscenes. Then. What mantle of the Great Father? Okay, Force Commander can be a uh, bait for the moment as the others get to killing. Down that guard tower, Cyrus. Uh, don't forget the shield thing. I, I think it's a shield. Uh, we'll see at the end of this. Let's see. I wonder if this uh, is the shield where I seen a model of her. They have three on a massive shield, and behind it is a pistol. Okay. Cyrus going over here, and each of these each of these squads are going to get their own abilities, of course. A demolition charge will bring that tower down. 
Uh oh. And Cyrus is as well. C4. C40K. <laughs> Excellent work, Cyrus. Avatus's position is on your tactical display. Revive him so that he may join your attack. And yeah. He's taking a beating. Uh, damn orcs found another path through the hills. There is a relay beacon near your position, Commander. Secure it, and we can deploy reinforcements to fill out your squads. And yeah, this guy has a heavy bolter, which takes the whole thing of uh, I have a big fucking gun, fuck you, to a whole nother level. The thing is, they yeah. need to be stationary to fire it, <laughs> and they need time to set up, and as you can see, they have limited firings. Beacon, and we can get his squad back to full strength. Reinforcements inbound. Okay. Excellent. Avatus and his Devastator squad are back to full strength. Now, push into the hamlet and eliminate those orcs, Commander. Okay, we could use Cyrus to scout, but... Uh, who needs a scout when you've got a gun that can mow down anything? Just gotta keep an eye on where the dots are as I place them. Oh, and then they're coming from the flank. Oh, not all of them. Okay, yeah, so first you put them over there. Yeah. When an enemy is suppressed, it means that they're they can move. A, a, their movement is slowed a hell of a lot, and the, the same for their attack speed, I think, or at least their attack efficiency. So we can quick slot between these guys. No. Avatus. Actually. Those orcs are yep. turning tail. They could be going for help. Stay alert. Yeah, orcs typically don't retreat. Or at the very least they don't often flee. Oh. Is that a Bane Blade hull? I know. Sure. Oh, the Force Commander is being left behind. One thing I do know for certain about Warhammer is that Bane Blades. My squad should set up in heavy yeah. cover, Commander. The suppressive fire from my heavy bolter will keep the Greenskins pinned. There, Devastator's ready to fire. The Bane Blade is deadly, but they take a lot of pain. Have a limited field of fire. Basically, Bane Blades have like 11 bar gun barrels uh, of varying size to, to mow death around. Wait, yeah, I don't think that's a Bane Blade for... I think Bane Blade is bigger. bigger. Yeah, that's uh, a Lehman Russ, which is uh, their main battle tank, I believe. Mantle of Cronus. No, I don't think so. Lehman Russ is Imperial God's uh, tank, I think. Well, this place was well, pre presumably guarded by the Imperial Guards. Uh, point taken. I'm not expert on tanks, though, so... Be vigilant. That's a good position. Weapons ready. Okay. Set you down there. And then move these people up front. Uh... Okay, we ha we are going to go a bit over time. There is a second relay beacon near your position. Activate it to finish securing the hamlet. Uh, let's see what. Adjust your positions. Which direction are they more likely to come from? Excellent work, Commander. The hamlet is secure. More orcs are on the way, Commander. Set up your forces to repel the attack. This hamlet must not fall again. You'd think that someplace so crucial would get a bit more defense. Once on approach. Come on, Dreamskins! The enemy is destroying the key structure. Okay, yeah. Base boys! <laughs> get to that position, <laughs> that's, a, that's a new one! Uh, what? Okay, they're... 
They are able to fire in more open directions, but they they're slowed down. They can't fire as effectively oh, as if they were oh, aiming in a specific direction. And we lost one of them there. Okay, just get the hell out. Set up looking that way. Actually, scouts, move out. You move in. Scouts go over there, actually. Well, basically, it's kicking on work. The one with the heavy guns. Who oh, was kicking on work? They are not dead. <laughs> Scout retreats. And just a special surprise for them. Tarkus, you give these guys a gift. Yeah, they're attacking from just out of range. And they immediately regret going, getting into range. Thunderhawks are on approach to return you to the Armageddon. Okay. This victory will long and done. In the halls of glory. Yeah, yeah, improved power armor. Okay, let's see. Mantle of the Great Father, level 3 power armor, armor rating 12, plus 21 health, plus 13 energy. Can only be used by the Force Commander. After being... Be yeah. After becoming the first Blood Raven to combine the roles of Chief Librarian and Chapter Master in M37, that is Millennium 37, Az uh, Azurai Vidya uh, was gifted with a mighty suit of Terminator armor fashion for him. The power armor he left behind was adorned with litanies of his past victories and modified for use by a non-psychic space marine. Okay. And... Yeah, these, a bunch of these have their own little descriptions. Let's not read out too many of them. Uh, we are almost well at two done, hours, Commander. and we're With th only three in. We can secure the main route into the capital. The Greenskins knew to strike where we were most vulnerable, Captain Thule. Cyrus is correct. Someone is agitating the orcs and pointing them at valuable targets. If we are going to win this war, we need to find out who is using the Greenskins against us. Okay, now we get to select. And the new folks get to level up. And Avatus has uh, the most points in range, which well makes freaking sense. He has a big freaking gun. <laughs> Let's put those in that. And Cyrus goes into your well, will and, and skill. Still, his infiltrate does not drain enemy G. Well, Cyrus and his squad are standing still. So basically, we can plant them somewhere uh, to act as, well, a stationary, uh, stationary uh, beacon. Let's see. Grim Silence. We only, ha we only have, let's see, yeah, less than five minutes on this one. So let's just take a look at these items. And then we'll move on to the next game. Because, yeah, we've already moved. We already spent extra time on two. And the next game is going to be another 40k game anyways. Okay, Grim Silence. Uh, after his entire squad died in action against the orcs infesting Greenskin Gorge on uh, Typhon, Initiate Nareen took a vow of silence on his promotion to Space Marine that endured until his death. His last words were to refuse the mantle of the tactical squad to remain as a scout in honor of his lost brothers. Okay. Uh, wait. Okay, there we go. I've missed, I've overlooked that. Uh, yeah, we, as is always often typical with simple RPGs, we have just a weapon, we have armor, and then we can have some accessories, like the parallel, the parabell of the lion. Oh, doorbell that was I heard. And why did I become Yoda all of a sudden? Mm hmm. <laughs> Uh, be not like the lion who leaves a viper to guard his den and is surprised to find serpents there upon his return. And it just gives ac more accuracy. 
which I think would go a lot better on Avatus probably, so he can take those. Okay. Uh, Rape and Mantle. Uh, 10 armor, f range damage. Yes, that's going on this guy. Let's see. This power armor bears engravings and adornments uh, listing the major campaigns of the Blood Ravens chapter. Similar markings are often added to the armors of veteran battle brothers, making them literal carriers of the chapter's history. Now, there is quite a bunch of stuff in this uh, in this franchise that is quite interesting. Oh yeah. yeah. Improved power they, armor. Yep. I would say they did mistake that they made a bit way too much focus on the space marines. If you go, a lot of people have a lot of lore, but space marines are the ones that are extremely overpowered in lore stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. Actually, the first Dawn of War was my introduction to the series. And if uh, if anyone wants to know what my favorite species is or faction, uh, it's the Eldar. For me, it's probably Eldar or Tau, or both in this case. Let's see. Mark 7 Aquila type, uh, made from thick ceramide plates and laced with electronically motivated fiber bundles. This heavy armor is distinctive of uh, Space Marines. Uh, space Marines actually undergo a very, very uh, grueling you know, regiment of uh, surgeries and implantations to actually even be able to wear this freaking armor. Technically, yeah. it's a second skin. Yeah, as well, they are also bio, very heavily bioengineered. Like, these they look are human, but meters. they practically aren't. Yeah, with us look at all problems that men with space marines see themselves as superior than normal humans. The, the only chapter that says is, the, it is depends on the marine, but the chapter that's the most kind to regular humans are the salamanders. Okay, and they are as long awesome. as I keep looking, if I keep looking down on the stream, it's because I'm trying to clean my glasses, which seem to be very dust brown today. Might be because I picked up, uh, I, uh, I put on uh, a different pair this morning, and well, haven't put them off, and actually they're big blue light blocking ones, so that might also be aiding in uh, blinking a lot. Mm. That's not really similar, but for me, it's dandruff. Okay, uh, all of these in here, these are from the DLCs, I believe, that came packaged with the Steam version of this game. We have, uh, how are we on time? Yeah, 20 seconds. Uh, yeah, just a bunch of stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking if we stream this game at some point, we'll probably read off all of these eventually. And yeah, there's a lot of random stuff that we can get or n miss. So... Yeah, we can still get some, yeah, some interesting bits of lore from all of that. For now, though, perfect timing. That's the timer. So stop that. And yeah, exit the windows. And then we move on to the final game. And like I said, it's also a 40k game. So give me a second to start it up. And as a spoiler. Uh, next week's uh, next week we are also starting with another 40k game because there's just so freaking many of them but that will be the last of them yeah there are many good ones but also many many bad ones yeah they basically take the shotgun approach with handing out the license okay. yeah and uh, those that accept it are the weakness of my flesh right and disgusting Craved the strength and certainty of steel. I aspired to the purity of the blessed machine. Your kind cling to your flesh, as if it will not decay and fail you. One day, the crude biomass that you call the temple will wither, and you will beg my kind to save you.
Did Mechanicus. The machine cult. Yeah, which I say is about time for. I feel like when they made this game, Game Workshop will re really uh, realize that we have way too many Space Marine games. So, Indeed. yeah, Mechanicus and other factions need some love. It seems the. It seems my tracker is getting a bit of lag. But yeah, this is Warhammer 40k Mechanicus, which, as you can guess, uh, <laughs> features the Mechanicus. So let's start a new game. I have heard a lot of good about this game. And yeah, Iron Man, Permadeath. That might all bring up some uh, ideas with some people who don't know about this game yet. Uh, customized oh, difficulty. Dear. Oh, okay, I didn't know this. All right, so we might need to tinker with that because I very much doubt I'll be much good at this game if we eventually stream it. 41st millennium, a time of darkness and war. The Imperial of Man claims the whole galaxy in the name of the God Emperor. It fights an endless war against Xenos from within, heretics from within, and but well, yeah, Xenos from without, heretics from within, and supernatural horrors from beyond. Alongside the Imperium's war fleet served the Adaptus Mechanicus. They are the tech priests of Mars, guardians and reclaimers of humanity's technology, ever searching for remnants of knowledge from man's glorious past, exploring the depths of, uh, depths of the galaxy for worlds long lost to mankind. In the name of their machine gods, they manufactured the Imperial war machines within gigantic foundries known as Forge Worlds. Gradually, the tech priests of the Adaptus Mechanicus shed their human weaknesses, replacing their limbs and gorgons. Yeah, organs, not gorgons. Uh, I don't think everyone has a Medusa inside of them. <laughs> With machinery that is both stronger and spiritually pure. Uh, their leaders, the inscrutable Magi, protect the Forge Worlds and secure the furthest corners of the galaxy with their cohorts of Skitari troops. Uh, yeah, what they mean with uh, ta -ta -ta, reclaimers of humanity's technology, basically there was a golden age in this uh, universe, uh, but as you can guess, uh, every golden age collapses eventually, and well, you get a universe in which there is only war. Yeah. And it's kind of sad, like, they try to rediscover all technology, but they don't want to learn to understand how it works. Yeah, basically the, basically the Imperium is a stagnant uh, cult of personality that isn't even aware of the actual personality of the person they're worshipping, because uh, the God Emperor wanted nothing to do with uh, being worshipped. Yeah, he, he wanted to eradicate religion to store out chaos, and that failed miserably. Yep. It is a time of warfare, tragedy, and port portents of doom. Across this benighted galaxy, the Adaptus Mechanicus are one of mankind's last defenses against a new Dark Age. I'm pretty sure they're already in a Dark Age. And perhaps they, it would only get worse if they end up in a grim Dark Age. <laughs> uh. That's the age they're all in. Yeah. <laughs> or perhaps they will be the ones who hasten its dawn. Because, yeah, the joke is that Warhammer is only grimdark all the time. <laughs> Which it basically is most of the time, at least. Predators. An echo in the noon sphere, Magus. An old transmission lost in the warp and recovered only now. Yeah, they, of, of course, because they uh, replace as much as they can with machinery, of course their vocal cords are going to go first. So they only speak in machine babble and sound, which, well, helps a lot with this game, so they don't actually have to get many voice actors. Is it worthy of our attention? Uh, this is Faustinius. The Great Divide torments the galaxy. The resources of the Adeptus Mechanicus are stretched thin. We are weaker than ever, though the Imperium at large knows it not. This represents an unknown, but possible key yeah, to victory. 
an opportunity to research, perhaps avert the ill fate that has befallen us. <clears throat> the transmission's origin is Silver Tenebris, part of the Emissius Solaris. <clears throat> It's an Ultima Segmentum. Yeah, the, you, as you can guess, they have a lot, they have a bit of a boner for Latin sounding stuff. Search the rolls, Redditus, gather them. Four months later, yes, even with the ability to travel fast, it still takes a long ass time to travel. A sec. Whoever finds this transmission and follows me here, gives thanks that uh, you will see what I have seen. But be wary, my fellow seekers of knowledge. Whatever lies beyond and beneath this world, I fear, I hope, I have awoken it. I came to this world to investigate its ruins, but I found so much more. Terrors, yes. Threats to soul and uh, to body and soul, but by the Omnissiah, I found such wonders. It's the last transmission of Magos Resac. Uh, he vanished while on an exploratory uh, mission to investigate Xeno structures on Silver Tenebris. Apostas, he found something. Scavola? Scavola? Our mission on this world is to as ascertain any uh, Xeno's presence, and if we find it, eliminate it as a uh, threat to the Imperium. The opening of the Great Divide means we can call on no additional support from the Forge Worlds. We must achieve this with the troops and resources we bring with us. The Great Divide is basically a tear in space-time uh, that makes it very, very hard to get around it, of course. Oh. Benefit analysis, peace for sector, knowledge for mankind, poten plus 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 potential, plus 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 opportunity. New face, Videx. An opportunity to destroy the works of the Xenos, Scavola. Not appropriate them. Temeskiran manuscripts, verse uh, 619. What the enemy builds, let it be made asunder, for uh, to us it will be as a house of sand and knives. Major, we are approaching the target coordinates. Yep. And of course, things are going wrong by crossing the warp. Our blessed machine spirit has freed us from the. Uh, oh, yeah, this is. <laughs> that went to hell fast. Yeah, in this universe, most travel is done by basically uh, grabbing space-time's ass and spread, giving it an extra asshole, and of course, it doesn't like that very much. <laughs> oh dear. Oh! They have a female one! Kepra. There she is. Temperate, climate, uh, climate atmosphere standard, breathable. Miskatari troops should be able to operate down there without trouble. Could be. It's hard to tell when they replace most of themselves with metal. Uh, boys, and she had a well, pitiful female physique on the armor. <laughs> okay, some pop up popped up. Okay, that seems to. Okay, whatever that pop up was, it seemed to have been messing with my uh, <clears throat> with my tracker. Let's see. Are they ready to make landfall? As soon as we're in the uh, stable orbit, majors, majors, however you're supposed to say that. And the stuttering is back. Administrative records indicate a, a single colony, St. Eckhart's Hope, on the surface near the Xenos ruins. No contact recorded in two centuries, colony presumed failed. And 
Yeah, with an Imperium that spreads for a good chunk of the entire freaking galaxy, you can take a guess how bad the bureaucracy is. Yeah. So it's off. It's not uncommon for entire planets to just uh, fall through the cracks and just die out because they don't get any supplies. That will just be forgotten or just live happily after. We don't realize that the Imperium have forgotten about them and they still pay taxes. Uh, going to take a second, see if this helps a bit with the tracker, changing its priority to high. Okay, that seems to have fixed it. I should probably do that standard. Let's see, the Skitari will deploy uh, to the surface near the ruins along uh, with a team of tech priests under my direct command. I shall monitor them from the uh, command throne on board. Servo skull redditors will serve as my eyes on the service. We will make landfall at once. Uh, yeah, some people might have been wondering what the hell is what these skulls. Uh, yeah, that's basically yeah skulls of people who have been uh, made to serve the empire even after death. And now, okay, the stuttering is going back and forth. Uh, just going to ignore it. Only he needs to go through this still. Yes, mages. I'll set up a forward command post. You know, Rasekas, uh, uh, transmission looked like it came from underground. We'll secure any entrances to an underground structure so your tech priests can begin the exploration. Okay. An agrolex sector located. This tomb reeks of stale, dusty antiquity. Its once stern architecture is littered with debris and tarnished with the uh, patina of age. Here and there, vicious in the structure can cast feeble light over cracked and tarnished metal. The tomb was once brutalist and oppressive, as if designed to crush the spirits of its inhabitants. It is no less intimidating now, but instead of evoking a merciless, guiding intelligence, it speaks only of decline and of death. This place seems abandoned at first glance, but as the exploratory troops move uh, through, the, through its hushed corridors, the ancient dust stirs, and something long dead begins to take on a facsimile of life. That means a facade of life, I believe. Going by our fragmentary information, it looks like a buried tomb structure. And then the sword of the Omnisire is ready to fall. We deploy immediately. Let secrets of this world be zero. Council caution, Magus Faustinius. Our purpose should uh, be here to destroy the threat of the alien, not to bask in its blasphemy. Af aphorisms of uh, the Logic Saints uh, 7.91. In the presence of the Xenos lies the invisible miasma of corruption. Destruction is not possible from orbit, uh, Videx. Uh, the structure is too deeply buried. And Scavola, I have no intention of plundering whatever trinkets I can find from this place. Now we'll be plundering plenty, if we get to that in our time slot. Yeah, fun fact, the Emperor did a lot out of that. Yep. The explorer you unit of tech priests is... In, uh, go ahead. I was to say, the Emperor wanted you to learn new tech and all that, so... Basically, the Empire of Man is basically everything he did not want to happen. So it's going to make it very interesting if they ever decide to bring him back. Oh dear. The exploratory unit of tech priests is inside the tomb and ready to proceed, Majors. There is no telling what we will find. Or my men will hold the perimeter in case of the unexpected. It would be a folly to commit our whole manpower to the unknown, especially when the potential of a moral threat exists that the Skitari are less able to withstand. I have the greatest respect for my Skitari, but they are still far from the ascension that a, track a tech priest affords. I'd agree. Yeah, I, I agree, Sabdamina. Uh, I shall lead the mission in person from the command throne, so you are not leading it in person. Servo Skull Redditus shall be my eyes and ears on the ground. Omnisire be praised, we're going in. Okay. 
The adaptive mechanics are a curious breed. They explore and interact with machines they do not fully understand. And many that they don't want to understand. Within this tutorial, you'll have to explore the interface to discover what to do. Like a tech priest, you must experiment in order to learn. We'll help you out this one time. Left mouse button, also known as left MB. Click on the adjacent room to move. So yeah, pretty basic. Bloody heck. <clears throat> These Sinos hieroglyphs, I know of them. They are my undoers, necrons, mysterious, ill-researched, corruptive. Oh, new face. I shouldn't call that a face anymore. This could be a rare uh, sample of the Necron language, Majors. We have barely any knowledge of it. Collecting data from these obelisks could uh, move our understanding of the language ahead for the first time in centuries. This is the work of the alien mag Majors. Codex Fulminatus 83.12. Show caution and scorn in all things. Yeah, you can see how uh, these people are not the brightest or kindest people when their religious texts are like that. Sometimes tech priests will, will feed back important information about what they encounter in a room. Uh, these situations will require you, our commander, to make decisions. There will be consequences, so choose wisely. Ahead is an obelisk-like uh, object covered in what can only be described as hieroglyphic symbols. It almost reaches the tall ceiling of this chamber. You could scourge it or destroy it. It is a monument to the alien that must fall. Scrutinize it, examine the inscriptions on the obelisk, or secure it. Check the surrounding chambers for potential dangers. Let's actually do that, because that's cautious and leads us to uh, do any further work. Oh. We're detecting a massive energy spike from within inside the tomb. Thank the ominous sire, no one was close enough to be hit by the radiation. But something's happening in there, something huge. Another new face? Definitely not much of one left on him. Uh, Noctilith source detected, also known as Blackstone. Request collection immediate. Blackstone is... <laughs> that is a very special something. That stuff is almost indestructible to my knowledge. I did not know that. I wonder if it was the name of a ship. Nope. Uh, the cohort searches the chambers adjoining the obelisk location. They find a few pieces of wreckage made from exotic materials and are gathering them when the obelisk suddenly splits open, bathing the cha its chamber in radiation. It appears there is something, also something inside the obelisk. Okay, we can move this around by holding the mouse and moving, and we can move to the next chamber. I believe these are partially randomly generated, but of course, since this is a tutorial, this one is all planned out. And yeah, easy guess what's going to happen here. Necrons. Rasak uh, did encounter them after all. No wonder he didn't make it off this planet. Every datum we have uh, says they are as deadly as they are in human. Says the people who torn out all of their humanity. Let's see. The cohort encounters resistance in the form of Xeno structures. Not flesh and blood creatures, but artificial bodies that move with precision and coordination. Crusade. The aggressive stance of the tech priests ensure they will not be outmaneuvered or the risk they're running ahead into the fire of the enemy. Uh, exercise extreme caution. Do not charge into head uh, heedlessly lest the trickery of the alien be our downfall. Follow the established combat uh, engagement protocols. It shall uh, be done by the book. Let's be cautious again. Slow plans, yeah, the slow advance risk granting the enemy the opportunity to execute an ambush of the Adeptus Mechanicus force. Okay. No, okay, that was a cool shot for a moment there. <laughs> Seen us from detected. Confirmed. Relatives cogitators now function for synthetic forms. <laughs> Overwhelming excitement. 
Finally, we can study this standard construct Necron Warrior. Weak spots detected. Uh, none is concerning. I wonder about the symbols emblazoned on their torsos. It must... Oh, another one. Do not underestimate Gauss... Do not underestimate Gauss weaponry. Highly volatile. This is true. I've heard our brothers and sisters of the Mechanicus have lost their lives trying to solve the mysteries of these Xenos weapons. Approach with caution. It is also, double checking co uh, cogitators, widely known that they will self repair, reanimate, or reconstruct themselves if left the time to do so. Wounds that you know, would instantly kill a Skatari are the equivalent of a Class C grade is to Necrons. So basically, yeah, we have to take them out well enough or close enough to each other before they get back up. At the start of every fight, you must decide the location of your units on the field of battle. Uh, you can only place units on the highlighted squares. Click on a square to place a unit. Uh, let's place one here. That's another one out. 12 health, and then they have defenses 1 and 1. Physical and energy, I believe those are, from what I remember seeing. And yeah, we only have these two. Apprentice Jeremiah and Majus Minarius. Start battle. Ow. They're J3 damage. That would have been four normally, probably. To move a unit, click with, uh, in the blue outline surrounding your unit. Uh, then you can confirm and the move. Then you can confirm the movement. Decline the movement, press right mouse button. Anywhere. Okay. Plus cognition. Okay, I, I was more looking for these things for cover. Uh, let's do it all the same. You go there. You've just moved your uh, tech priest to a source of uh, cognition points, CP. CPs represent the valuable information the tech priests are harvesting. There are several ways to collect CP. The fastest way is moving your tech priest closer to the source of CP. There are many other ways to collect CP, so look around to find out what they are. Okay, they automatically drain it. Uh, shared team resource or plan ahead. Okay. And then they can... They cannot shoot either... They cannot shoot that one, but they can take a shot at this one. Unknown amount of damage. We've not revealed the statistics for this target. As a result, the amount of damage dealt is unknown. Several skulls, specialized weapons, and other skills reveal the life of an enemy. And yeah, that's this point. We can use one uh, CP to, well, reveal uh, an enemy's stats. This is your servo skull, the skull of a faithful servant of the Omnisire, augmented to be your useful companion. Uh, every tech priest has their own servo skull. Servo skulls are very helpful in combat and cognition point uh, uh, collection. Select an enemy to find out its battle statistics. So yeah. So then after that, okay, they have four health and four physical armor. Or one physical armor with and music is picking up a bit. So why is this thing lagging? Yeah, I, I don't get what's going on with PC face. You've revealed the statistics stats of this enemy. Knowing your enemy's stats will greatly increase your chance of success. Servo scores repeal, re reveal uh, HP, physical armor and energy armor statistics. We then decide what enemy types, physical or energy, you know, work best against this type. Well, this thing has no energy defense, so that's our best choice. Um, I don't know... Okay, we can't act with him anymore. We'll just move. And then... Yeah, 
let's just let's move there. Oh, okay, they grab it automatically just on passing by. <laughs> Grady bunch. Oh, enough CP to be able to use a CP powered weapon. Okay. Some weapons like the Phosphor Serpenta require CP to use. Look to the right hand uh, of each action to learn the CP cost of that action. Uh, what is Phosphor? Ah, there we go. Single target range attack reveals target statistics. Range 15 meters, 4 to 6 electric da uh, energy damage, and a crit chance of 10. And Wait, we can is, take a. Hmm? Is that a pistol? On the arm? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these guys have a thing with their uh, robot arms. And again, Fleecy Face is acting up. Is it because it's hidden or something? No, it's okay. It's, it's acting up because the game is taking up a lot of resources, it seems. Okay. Killing Necrons isn't simple. Necrons are made of a self-repairing metal that is able to knit together dismembered limbs and gaping wounds. We call this the reanimation protocol. When a Necron is in their reanimation protocol, they are unable to fight, but will return to fighting condition soon. Dealing any amount of damage to a Necron in this protocol stage will destroy them indefinitely. Okay, so they are just taken out. Uh, Basically, they're down, but not out. So... Let's see. We so basically, need to fire at them again. Yeah, you've selected a weapon that is not in range of any target. Look for a weapon icon to appear in your desired target, or check the range of the weapon. Uh, we can send the service call out to check on this one. Who has less health, but has energy yeah, protection instead. Okay, end our turn. Oop. Okay, nasty little bean. They've had their turn and... Oh, okay, they automatically harvest it from these things. It's good to know. You'll be able to call in other members of the cohort as the battle goes on. This will happen at the start of every round. You'll need cognition points to deploy troops. Okay, another reason to get them. And we can call in servitors. So let's do just that then. And servitors uh, are their own little can of uh, nightmares. Okay, not enough points, one each. So there we go. In Mechanicus, there are two types of units to control. Tech priests, the two units you have already commanded, or troops such as the ones which you just deployed onto the battlefields. Troops are your servants and cannon fodder. They don't have access to as many weapons and skills as tech priests. However, they are useful and should not be overlooked. Okay. Uh, servo arm. Uh, okay, let's get up close to you, because you are vulnerable to physical attacks. Uh. Hmm? I know this where they are now. You've used all possible actions for these units and there's nothing uh, more it can do this round. Press the end turn button at the bottom right of the X. Uh, can't the other one still move? Uh, no, this, it, that, it's round. <clears throat> it's specific turn was over, not the entire turn of the squad. Let's move up. And, uh, yeah, these people don't look so good, do they? Because one oh, does not become a servitor willingly. Uh, one damage. And your turn. Uh, you get over there, get that point. Not sure if they'll carry be, over. I can say these people. Look, basically this. Don't be a criminal in uh, 40k. Like, yes, there are many criminals, but yeah. Criminals that get caught may suffer a lot of horrible things. Okay, and we can't shoot past our own allies. 
Even if they are only servitors, so... Uh, let's hide a moment then. Oh. You're about to move using cognition movement. This happens when you move within the orange movement and uh, outline. Consider the move... Uh, confirming the movement will use CP, allowing your tech freeze to move faster. Okay, so another use for, the, uh, for that. Uh, in that case, let's move all the way over there. And then shoot this motherfucker in the back. And because they're all downed, we win. Two flights remaining. All Zeno's life forms purged. The cohort's HP amount carries over from each fight within the mission. Keep this in mind when. Uh, when exploring a tomb and look out for opportunities to repair. So yeah, th this game has aspects of a roguelite, with that included. There's something I here. See, I can see us streaming this. What is going to go wrong here? Let's get a roller. Hypothesis formulation. Sarcophagi, coffins, burial places, structural purpose designation, tomb. The chamber ahead are several groups of structures in like upright coffins of an unknown material. Ensure you observe your surroundings carefully. You know, details picked and grabs uh, and readings may be the key to success. Picked grabs, I believe, is uh, their, their uh, wording for pictures or photos. Do not tarry to observe the works of the alien. Press on and avoid any distractions. Ignite. Make sure you destroy any structure that looks suspicious. It is worth pausing in your advance to do harm to the Xenos abominations. Let's again be cautious. They're waking up. Uh, yeah, that's a bad thing. The cohort examines the sarcophagi and note that each uh, indeed contains a Necron warform within its heavily armored exterior. They are drawing power from somewhere. Got two CP from that and more Blackstone. But no combat. Yeah, sounds like if we try to ignite them, we might not have been able to break them open. And yeah, we're in, we're down on less than a minute of time. Oh. After exploring the chamber for several minutes, a tile on their foot clicks. Yeah, the sound of whirring energy builds up around your troops. A quick omni uh, spec scan reveals you're surrounded on all sides by Xenos life forms. And yeah, kill all enemies again. Okay, only a small little place. Um, a Necron warrior and a Necron warrior. We can't actually identify what specific type they are. So for now, let's just put both of you up front. Stop the clock. And let's put up some servitors as well as can, Father. So actually, we can, spend, we can spend CP now already to add extras of these. Uh, Let's actually move two of them. Let's actually remove two of them. And start this battle. We'll, once this battle is over, we'll call it. Okay. Yeah, we'll, okay, oh, yeah. the camera also moves with WSD. Oh, that's good. But uh, what do you say? Would you like to stream this? I definitely want to give it more of a try. And yeah. Doing it on stream would make it even more fun. Oh, yeah. Hell. Okay. Oh. Ow. And I think I just had an idea. Yeah. Once we've done something Sunday or showcase Sunday, what about yeah. tactical Sunday? Hmm. Well, we could make it more of a fill-in thing. It will just put whatever. We feel like it on Sunday, if anything at Boom. all. Yeah. Just, I'm just brewing ideas, just in case. Because, yeah, I, <clears throat> uh, I am streaming four days a week now already. 
and there is something I will be joining, likely in a. But I will. There's something I joined that is likely to start in a month, which is a, a Minecraft server for small streamers, and yeah, I'll I'll have to stream for that as well from time to time, and yeah, we could fill that in on Sundays because that's probably when most of the people on there in that server are likely to be able to active. Oh dear. Or, or perhaps on Saturday, then, uh, no, that's, okay, dinner is soon. <clears throat> uh, all the more reason to finish this quickly. But yeah, I'll be streaming for that as well, but instead of, yeah, uh, we'll have to see with the uh, first stream of that, since, of course, we'll try, we'll try to have as many people as possible there. Uh, but uh, beyond that, I'm thinking about putting it on the weekend. We could move Monkey Island to Sunday if needed, if it Saturday turns out better for that. <clears throat> Anyways, when servitors are hit in combat, tech priests take an interest. Quickly noting down damage angles, projectile speeds, and other useful uh, combat information to be used later against their enemies. So yeah, when tech priests, when servitors get hit, we get CP. All the more reason to use them. And they... Yeah. And dead. But at least Ow. we get another CP. Servitor 1 has died. Do not worry. Troops are cannon fodder designated. Uh, designed to protect your tech priests from enemy attacks. Without tech priests, your mission will fail. So yeah, we can lose them. Without too much uh, fuzz. Now, can we attack and then move? Actually, we know nothing about these, so first let's use a skull. Okay, you have physical resistance. And then this will not do that much, actually. Hmm. Also, there's a cooldown on some of these things, of course. Okay, oh, wait, what is that? Cognition gauge is full. Okay, oh, we can get more cognition from that. And we now have four we already. Shoot this thing. That did zero damage, and now get behind the servitor <laughs> as a meat shield. It, is that it is literally what they are. absorbed? Yeah, DMG. Oh, right. That's, okay, so I misread it then. And this one has energy resistance. Probably should have taken a shot at this one, but with this, we're taking a shot at him. Five damage, nice. And then... Uh, I don't think distance make has too much effect... ...yet. Let's just get a... Can of tech scarabs? Oh. Okay, that cannot be good. Normal scarabs are already bad enough in fiction. So cyber tech <laughs> scarabs? What are uh -oh. those? Opportunity is knowledge. Gather. Must obtain. Required. Scarabs detected. Sor they, yeah, source date servicing. No life forms detected. Area safe. Continue forward. Redditors, verify your cogitators, then tell me what surfaced from Magus Rizax uh, cogitators, or however you're supposed to say that. Scarabs of an unknown Xeno's race. They're mechanical ones. Biology, synthetic, possible artificial intelligence, one specimen uh, scattered, AI theory is false. Yeah, they do not like AI in this world. They call it abominable intelligence because, well, robot revolution. <laughs> Personal recording. Weeks of study show that there are many variants of Scarab, each with their own worlds within the Xeno's economy and architecture. Able to build and deconstruct anything they encounter, they are able to repair other units within their species with lightning speed. Be warned, they are deadly in large swarms. It appears the machine spirit is with us. We've been able to access some more of Rasak's data that we thought was corrupt. It must be due to us recording these Xenos life forms that the machine spirit has blessed us with access to the cogitated records. 
it's uh, unsure. It's unsure why he would lock this under a synthetic proximity encryption. Either way, we don't want much to do with those things. For now, though, we call in another meat shield. We call it there. And immediately they get shot. Okay, but putting a bunch of servitors on the field is not a bad thing, since, well, you're likely to get the CP back anyways. It's for you. Get slappy and pay this guy back. And, yeah, it's turn-based, as you can see up here. Who gets to go next? Opportunity. Um, okay. Actually, I want to do damage. That is useless against the... Uh, against this, that one. So... Acid. That can't be good. Okay. Um, yeah, just attack these things. We don't know how much that actually hurt, if any at all. And in turn. And, okay, we should have expected that. Yeah. When you enter melee combat in an adjacent square to an enemy, you are unable to use your ranged weapons as they are too dangerous to use at close range. Okay. So we back off. Can we still get a shot on that guy? No, we cannot. So... Let's risk it on this one. There we go. And... Yeah, then we just move as far away from those things as we can. Oh, and... Never mind. And we don't even get to see what they do. Okay, only one damage. So basically, they are fodder that swarms. Yeah, they are literally in swarms, so of course they swarm. <laughs> when an enemy moves out of melee range, providing your unit has a melee weapon, the enemy will trigger an opportunity attack. Okay, so that's what that was. An opportunity attack gives your unit a free melee attack on an enemy. Each unit can only perform one opportunity attack per round. And... That outright destroyed him, okay. Then... Let's see... We have a shot on these. They don't actually seem to be able to take that much. There we go, those are destroyed. And... Let's see... That is physical damage, and this guy is shielded against energy, so let's move up and give him a whack. With some luck, this will destroy him completely. Yep, there we go. Maximum damage, and that's this done. Or is... Yep, there we go. Yeah, I, I definitely want to play more of this. Uh, but before we move this on any further, let's save because we are already almost at three hours here. <laughs> yeah, we, we should probably go a bit more strict with uh, how much extra time we can give this. Yeah, like this one we could have saved for the next time. Yeah. Oh, uh, well then. <clears throat> And you're definitely going to need to drop the settings a bit on this, I think. Uh, wait, do, where are your... Where are your graphical settings? So here... Okay. Uh, motion blur is obviously getting removed. Bloom. There, that should help a little bit. But yeah, if this is going to make things stuttery, I might turn the, the model off for when we stream this. But... This one is a definite yes. Uh, besides that, what do you think of the other ones? War of the Overworlds, War Groove, and Dawn of War 2. 
all of them, except, just Wargrove feels like it should be one we should investigate on to see why that one is just was just a, a small spark. Okay. So definite maybes to yes on all but Wargrove then. Yeah, just Wargrove may become a yes until further information. Okay. Uh, yeah. We'll have to see that on our own time, but for now, this will be the end of the stream. Tomorrow we will do, be doing our second catch-up stream on, for the main week you know, streams of Darksiders 2. Uh, hopefully with the performance a little bit improved. And yeah, Tuesday, another of that <laughs> will be back on normal schedule, hopefully with even more Darksiders. <laughs> so, for now... Uh, thank you anyone who has been watching now or later and thank you uh, xq job or however you're supposed to say that for chatting and thank you especially as always drakir oh you're most welcome my friend and yeah well again thank you for watching and until next time have a nice day and until then be safe folks watch out for scarabs <laughs>